So can you can you start maybe outlining what is the native Hawaiian culture? Okay. Well, in the first place, one very important thing to remember is that uh, Hawaii today has many different cultures. So that there is the native Hawaiian culture, and then there are many other immigrants who have come here with also their own cultures. Now, there's a difference between the native Hawaiian culture and what we call local culture, meaning that is not exactly native Hawaiian, but it is also unique to Hawaii, and it's the mix of the different cultures. And in the local culture, you, as a visitor, you would experience things that are Japanese, that are Chinese, that are Filipino, that are from other parts of the Pacific. And then also, the native indigenous culture um, is incorporated into much of that too. Now, if someone comes here and wants specifically, so you, again, you will have the experience of both native Hawaiian and local cultures. and. You also will have, um, of course, if you want to look for just the native culture, the, the native Hawaiian culture, there are different places to experience it. Obviously, because I work at Bishop Museum, I want to tell people to come to Bishop Museum. And that, I think, is really the outstanding display of native Hawaiian culture, both the in the past and also as it is today. Because of course, the Native Hawaiian culture has changed a great deal in the last two centuries because of all the different cultures that have come mm -hmm. here, all the different influences. And of course, because Hawaii is part of the United States now, that's, um, you, can't, you can't get away from that either, of course. So if you come from another country, you're coming to part of the United States, and that's another thing that's going to be different from your home country too. Um, so what does ca characterize the native culture? I mean, what's the well, the native culture, Hawaiian culture, is part of the Polynesian culture. And in the Pacific, there are three general cultural groups uh, that you can find in different islands. Because, of course, the Pacific is huge. The islands, there are many, many islands. And they are covering a huge expanse of ocean. But we say that there are three general categories. There's Melanesian, there's Micronesian, and there's Polynesian. And so Hawaiian culture is part of Polynesian culture. And the Polynesian general culture covers a huge area because at one end it's New Zealand, and another end it's Easter Island. And it's then probably it, the most widespread culture it is, in the world. <laughs> it is, it is. And at the far, the, the, the most, most northerly is the Hawaiian culture. How did it happen that these people travel so much? That's really what we don't know. Them. We don't know. I mean, the, Hawaii, the Polynesians were the greatest voyagers of the whole planet in terms of the distance they covered and the small islands that they got to. It's amazing. And you think of how many of the canoes that set out never found land and the people died. But they just kept going because they just kept going. And it's just a human characteristic, I guess. So... Um, the Polynesian cultures do share similarities. There are similarities in the language, and there are cultural practices that are somewhat similar too. And if when you go to New Zealand, for example, you will see that a number of the place names are similar to Hawaiian place names. Of course, you won't be here very long, but if you were here longer, you would see that there's a similarity in the languages, even though these cultures are thousands of miles apart. But of course, again, there are many differences too. Um, Native Hawaiian culture was originally, as with many other cultures, uh, very tied to the land, so very tied to nature. So Hawaiians were very close to nature because that's how they existed. You had to be close, you had to understand how it worked. Because if you were not able to get food in the places that you needed to, then you were doomed. You couldn't survive. So Hawaiians, of course, uh, gathered food from the ocean, and they gathered food from the land. They, of course, grew things, so they grew. Um, one of the things that's typical of uh, Polynesian cultures is some of the foods that were carried to the different islands, so that 
they, these, these were types of plants which would survive in these different Pacific locations, and that's what people relied upon. When the Polynesians got to New Zealand, it was too cold for some of those plants that they brought mm -hmm. with them. They had to adapt to other things. So today there is a traditional native way oh, yes. of cuisine? Yes. I guess then also being blended with all the other Pacific Yes, animals. that's Actually. right. But also, too, something that's very important is that Hawaiian culture was very, um, very affected by particularly American culture, starting even in the early 1800s, because the, the missionaries came from America in 1820, and they were extremely influential. So even though Hawaii was a separate country up until 1898, it was very influenced by America, and for many reasons. So in, after Hawaii became a territory of the United States in 1898, and then a state, in 1959, Hawaiian culture diminished a great deal, partly because it was actually suppressed in some ways, and in other ways just because the rest of the, the, rest of the culture changed. And so in the 1970s, there was a resurgence, a, a, a renaissance, which is we would call the Hawaiian Renaissance. And mm -hmm. since that time, there has been a regrowth of uh, the Hawaiian language, which became very endangered, and it still is. Um, and Hawaiian practices such as hula, because hula, people from other countries often don't realize that hula is a very serious dance. They see pictures of women wearing grass skirts and they say, oh, that's the hula. Mm -hmm. And in reality, hula is a very, um, it's a very exacting dance. It, it takes, you have to practice a great deal. It's a lot of intensive study and a lot of work. And there are lots and lots of people now who dance hula. There is a major hula competition every year, which is on TV and is watched by many, many people. And the um, increasing Hawaiians have increasingly become politically active, mm. and to try to regain some form of specifically indigenous Native Hawaiian government, because there is none. Here, I mean, it's not like in the U.S. there are no tribes, no protected exactly. area. Exactly, and that's one of the big problems because in the rest of the United States, the federal government recognizes certain tribes as having their own sovereignty, as having their own independence. I mean, there are specific acts that are regulating their exactly. social and life. Exactly, and there is no such thing for Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, the, that process is continuing to get federal recognition of Hawaiians as native people who can then create their own laws, their own properties. So a certain degree of independence. Exactly. But are we speaking something like Puerto Rico, where uh, people are actually willing also to maybe separate from the United States? Right. Or they're just thinking about more uh, self-determination in terms of law, but still depending from the United States? And it's the problem with the Hawaiian political movement. It's really fragmented, and there isn't a lot of consensus as to what people want. And there are radicals who are saying, yes, complete separation, but most people are wanting federal recognition so there can be some sort of government, separate separate government, but then would contain within the state of Hawaii, because there's no way that it could be totally right. separate. Do people study their own language in school? Mm -hmm. But uh, there are, in fact, Hawaiian language schools, immersion schools, which are taught entirely in Hawaiian from when children are in preschool. But that's still just a fragment of people. There are a lot of others who learn Hawaiian as a second language, either in high school or college. And, but there are not a lot of people who are fluent. And Most of the Hawaiian, though, native Hawaiian speaks English. Oh, of course. In yeah. 100% oh, yeah. almost. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, everybody does. Everybody says, except for a handful of people who live on the island of Niihau, which is still exclusively Hawaiian. It's owned by just one family. The inhabitants are all Hawaiian, and they speak Hawaiian as their first language. But they also also speak English to different degrees. But everybody else speaks English here, unless they're recent immigrants. How about religion culture? There is not as much. Christianity really, well, I, as I said, the missionaries came in 1820, but the year before they arrived in 1819, the Hawaiians overthrew their own religion because the religion was so tied to the political process. And it was, it was very much um, 
in any case, it was it was very repressive, and Hawaiians looked at foreigners who were coming here at that point and looking around and saying, they are breaking our religious rules. They are not suffering. They are not being struck down. They are not being sacrificed. Therefore, we are questioning whether all of these restrictions that we live under, which are religion based, are really necessary. And they overthrew the religion again partly as a political act. So the following year, the Christian missionaries arrived and there was no functioning native religion. So Christianity just took over. There are, to, to a degree, I mean, there, there will never be a return to the traditional Hawaiian religion in terms of its um, extremely repressive uh, rules and human sacrifice that existed. But nonetheless, there are a lot of people who have a realization of, an understanding of, and an appreciation of some of the traditional Hawaiian religious practices. And there were many gods, there was not just one god, but there is one particular traditional Hawaiian goddess who a lot of people continue to believe in, even if they're not Hawaiian, who is mm -hmm. Pele, who is the goddess of the volcano. And Mo many people, just in conversation, even scientific people, will refer to Pele as the embodiment of the of the volcano of the of active volcanoes on the island of Hawaii. And when you read newspaper articles, when you see TV reports about eruptions, very frequently the reporters will refer to Pele. So that is, she is the one of the Hawaiian gods who is the most still acknowledged today and believed in by many, many people. So if, a, if an Italian tourist come here, an Italian traveler come here, want to experience the museum, what, what, what do we see? What do we... Well, Bishop Museum um, for Hawaii and for the United States actually is quite old because it's over a hundred years old. And our, our buildings are...